YCS Baloney, a.k.a. YCS Bly, a.k.a. YCS Irrelevant, has concluded, and Joshua Schmidt has won with Runic Bysteel. But where that ban list at? Let's dive on into it, shall we? Now that I'm finally starting to feel better, hello, ladies and gentlemen, it is your host with the most, Avery LR32 here, and destroy the ever living boo boo stain. Oh, how I almost got there without coughing. Off of that like and subscribe button as we climb even higher, the 1300 ladder. Hope you're all having a fantastic day. I apologize about the uploads not being daily. I actually caught the RSV bug. Um, so if you've been keeping up with the past couple of videos, I've been coughing and hacking and whatever. I actually have RSV, or I had RSV. Now I'm kind of feeling better. We're kicking its booty booty butt cheeks on out of my nostrils and my throat. Pause. That's what she said. And uh, we're feeling much better. So I uh, hope you all having a fantastic day. I did watch a little bit of YCS Bologna, Bologna, however you pronounce it. Uh, and Joshua Schmidt, a fellow YouTuber, very competitive player, uh, a pro player, I would say, uh, not only won the World Championships for Master Duel, a.k.a. I'm only a minute in, so I won't say it, but you know what I really want to say, Master Boo Boo Stain. Uh, he's the world champion in that terrible game. Uh, no offense, Josh, I just think that the game is garbage and hot dog water. Uh, but he won this YCS, and he's won YCS before. He's a fantastic player. He won with Runic Bysteel Synchro Good Stuff, playing stuff like the Bysteel Alu Bar and Bysteel Lubellion to get to Magnum, Jurus Worm, Seroiner, all that good stuff. Um, but what I'm more interested in is that now that this YCS has concluded, we're not getting another YCS until February. And I said it in my, <clears throat> excuse me, ban list discussion video from a couple days ago, but I really do think that we're not going to be getting a ban list until the end of December, maybe, but probably more like some point in like mid-January. And I keep on looking at my screen here because I have the ban list pulled up. It was updated on September 15th. You know, December 15th hits, that is that is technically three months. But I don't think that Konami is really going to want to drop a ban list yet when we are getting, you know, Maze of Millennium in January and then like a month and change later in February, we get Phantom Nightmare, which of course gives us the new Ubel cards. It gives us all the good Raid Raptor cards um, that I think are going to be pretty good. I tried testing the Ubel cards last night and they're just garbage. I really want to play Ubel, but it's just garbage. <laughs> I'm sorry. Um, I'm going to be sticking with Centurions and maybe dip my toes in with Fire Kings and Raid Raptors. But what we saw at this YCS was very interesting. We saw Fire Kings in the top 64 when they just became legal on December 8th. And at the time you're making this video, it's December 10th. So technically the deck was only legal for two, three days max since it comes out a day early OTS stores. And it's interesting to see that it was able to garner some attention and get some wins, most likely because of the fact that players didn't know what these cards did. And players were able to take advantage of that, similar to what I did with playing Centurion. We got 10th place, people didn't know what my cards did, and I laughed all the way to the bank. <laughs> um, but what can we see for Yu-Gi-Oh's future <clears throat> moving forward? Uh, it's going to be the year of the fire. You know, you're going into Yu-Gi-Oh in 2024. Cards are going to be expensive. Like, I checked on Wanted Seeker of Simple Spoils. Last I saw, the card was 50 to 60 bucks. It's $120 now at the time you're making this video. Maybe even has gone up since this YCS happened. But it's expensive. Like, I was looking at some of these prices to build Rescue Ace. You're talking over $600. Like, if you literally don't have any cards and you want to build Rescue Ace, like these top builds, card for card, you're spending over $600. And that's insane. You know, obviously, prices fluctuate day to day like the stock market, but that's a big ask for someone who wants to play something like Rescue Ace or anything that has a DFL Star package, to be honest, um, especially when we get Snake Eyes Populous in Phantom Nightmare that's going to push the Snake Eyes stuff even further beyond, you're going to need those cards out of Duelist Nexus and Age of Overlord, respectively, to be a competitive player. Now, am I saying that the format's going to be bad? No, because if anything, this YCS, as irrelevant as people are saying it is because of the fact that we could be getting a ban list soon or later, it just depends on when Konami decides to drop the freaking thing, um, the format is still healthy. And I say that because when you look at all of the different decks that were in the top 64, you had diversity upon diversity. You had 
Fire Kings, Tier Element. You had Purely, two of which were Sprite Purely variants, which hindsight being 2020, I can't believe I played that deck and actually got my invite because I'd rather just be playing Hand Traps now that I've fallen in love with 15 of them in my main deck playing Centurion. Um, I think it was like, what, four Centurions or something? Eight, maybe, something like that in the top 64? Either way, there was representation. It was the Horus build. Um, one of them was a Horus build. You know, it's so many different decks that you have the ability to play. Hell, we saw in the Seattle Regional on the previous weekend, a, a Runic Stun deck won a Seattle Regional. It came in first place undefeated. Like, that's insane. And Runic Stun, I would argue, isn't even really that expensive. You know, you pick up some Floodgates, all the Runic cards are pretty cheap. I think, like, maybe minus tip. Maybe that's, like, a $20 card, I think. But it's the point that you have these options available to you. And that is what's good. Even if you just want to play on the local level, you have options available to you. Fire Kings, not as good without the Dio Bellstar, Seeker, Simple Spoil stuff. But you could still just buy three structure decks and play that. That's not very good, but it's the fact that you have that option. You can still be competitive, and that's what's great about this format. Now, with that being said, there are still issues with this format that I already listed in my balance discussion video from a couple days ago that you should go watch. Shameless plug. Um, <laughs> but this is one of the more healthier formats, and I think it will be looked back on uh, with fondness. Uh, because, yes, you have decks that people hate. There's always going to be decks that people don't like. I mean, look at my, you know, how to play tier element video. It got a few dislikes compared to the other how to play videos that I've done or the Yu-Gi-Oh! in-depth videos because people just don't like talking about tier element. They don't like playing against it. They think it's toxic. They think it's degenerate. And yes, the Ashizu cards should be banned. Aigido, Kelbet, Kelbidio, Midor, I think should all just be taken out back and shot. I think the Prosperity should go to one. I think Fenrir should go to one or be banned. Um, there are things that if they got hit... I think people would be even happier with this format because I feel like the general consensus is that overall people, I say were because we're probably going to be getting a balance soon, but they were very happy with this format. You didn't have the BS of a Rise Heart running around. You didn't have the BS of Cash Tier at full power with Diabolsis milling out your cards, Shangri Era locking out your zones. <coughs> That's not fun for players. And I feel like overall this format was fun. You know, when I went to that regional in Lake Worth, I played against a different deck pretty much every single round. Like, I played against Unchained. I played against Purely, which I lost to Chris LeBlanc. <laughs> uh, I played against... The only thing that I played double of was Simple Spoil Rescue Ace. And even then, those weren't back-to-back. -back. Uh, everything else was a different deck every single round. That should speak for itself for how good the format is right now when you do play against a bunch of different decks every format. So, my hat goes off to this format. Uh, really not much to complain about, you know? Just kind of touch up some things here and there. Konami maintain the course of what we're doing, and I think things are going to go good. Now, moving on to 2024, is there anything on the horizon that we should be worried about? And maybe Raid Raptors, but even then, like, probably not, because hand traps are always going to be a thing. Like, if they pop off and you don't have a hand trap, then yeah, they're really good, but... I don't think they're going to be all that great. I mean, I would be more concerned about, like, Rescue Ace and Fire Kings, depending on how hard Rescue Ace gets hit. Um, I'd be more concerned about the things we have now than, like, Raid Raptor. Like, again, I think it'll be pretty solid, but you have well-timed hand traps. I think the deck just falls apart from what I've seen. So, guys, let me know what you think about this. Let me know what you've thought about this format. Is there anything that you want to see change? Did you even play competitively this format? Let me know all that more. I would love to get y'all's thoughts. Guys, thank you so much for watching, and I will see you in the next video.